First of all, can I introduce on the far right, Bill Kirkup. Bill is Sustainability Project Manager for the North East Improvement and Efficiency Partnership. And he's got huge experience of actually working with public sector organisations in the North East of England. And has got very wide knowledge of sustainability issues relating to food. And so a huge um, um, fund of experience to draw upon as has the person sitting next to him, who is Mike Duckett, not Kevin Wallace. Um, Mike Duckett, um, catering manager of Royal Brompton Hospital. Um, Rosie referred to um, Mike and his work earlier on, um, a real pioneer in the sustainable field, it's sustainable food field. So thank you very much, Mike, for, uh, for coming along to uh, contribute. And last but not least, Jane Carton-Smith, um, Keshi, um, independent um, consultant, um, previously at Oxford Brookes <coughs> University. Um, a person who's focused on um, sustainability and food for a number of years now and um, developed um, a number of real um, um, groundbreaking initiatives, uh, for, particularly for the cost sector. So that's the uh, panel. And um, I've asked each of the panel to give a very short presentation, three or four minutes, outlining what they see as being <coughs> the major challenges and opportunities regarding the sustainability agenda and public sector catering. Once they've given their presentations, we shall then invite your participation in the form of comments, questions, um, and see how things go. Okay, thank you. Bill, can I ask you to start? Okay, um, I'm not very good at brevity, so um, I'll, I'll, I'll crack on and try not to go over my three minutes too much. Um, I sort of asked to identify some challenges and opportunities. I've, I, I've come up with four, four for each, seem like a, a fairly round number. I think challenge number one, uh, I think there needs to be greater clarity in the debate about sustainability. Um, at the moment, it, it strikes me in, in the discussions which I engage in that sustainability means all things to all people depending on what their particular background and interest happens to be. Um, we need a common language in relation to sustainability and an enhanced literacy level in relation to sustainability. Common definition would be very helpful, as was pointed out earlier. And I think in particular, uh, we need to debunk some of the myths and partial perspectives which are, are still swirling around. Food miles, please don't believe in food miles, it's not helpful. Local food doesn't automatically equate to sustainable food. It means it's local. It may or may not be sustainable, but there are a whole list of other aspects of sustainability you need to take into account. So what I'm basically saying is we need an evidence-based approach rather than, you know, food's a very emotive issue. We saw that earlier with the conversation about beef. Um, let's put all that to one side and let's just look at the evidence and see what that says. So that's challenge number one. Challenge number two is related, as these things tend to be. I think that because there's so much uncertainty about what sustainability actually means, there is a, a very definite perception, in my experience, that sustainability and efficiency are incompatible. Uh, sustainability tends to be regarded as a luxury issue, and as soon as times are hard and you're under pressure to save money, it immediately goes out the window, and it's like, oh, no, it's all about saving money. There are tensions between sustainability and efficiency, but actually there's a lot of complementarity. Um, sustainability is always about doing, being doing more with less. That, that underpins a lot of the sort of the resource management approach. Um, less waste, use less water, use less energy. These are entirely consistent with the efficiency agenda. So there are tensions between sustainability and efficiency, but they're not in, inimicable and we shouldn't treat them as such. Third challenge, uh, we need to mainstream sustainability. We've been needing to do this ever since we invented or coined the term sustainability, and we've failed ever since we coined the term sustainability. It's always seen as something over there that somebody else does. Well, it's not. It's, it's all of our business, and if we're going to achieve any of the government's aspirations or any of anybody's aspirations in relation to sustainability, then everybody has to get involved. Again, I'll come back to issues like reducing waste, reducing energy, improving perception of service. These are all business issues. They should be mainstream concerns, not something that somebody over here is concerned with and not you. Last, last challenge, we, we need transparency. Um, that applies both to the, the debate, so we need less obfuscation, less deliberately misleading debate, which we have a lot of. 
But we need transparency about what people are actually doing. We don't have or we don't use the KPIs which exist to allow us to actually assess what anybody is doing. Whenever I look at case studies, it's actually very difficult to know whether or not that particular case study is, is a good example of sustainability or not, because often there's only two or three issues which it have addressed, and there might be 10 sustainability issues which I'm looking for. If people are applying, you know, making more use of KPIs, accepting that sustainability is quite a lengthy list of, of variables, then that's going to introduce transparency, that's going to make it much easier for us to go in and say, OK, I want to look at this organisation, how are they doing? Good, they're very good on that, they're very good on that, and they don't seem to have done anything on this. So, you know, we can learn from that, but we need to plug a few holes. Sorry, I, I told you I wasn't good at brevity, I've already overrun three not minutes. Bad, not bad, not bad. I'm, I'm taking these three minutes both for challenges and, and now I've got three <laughs> minutes for opportunities. Opp opportunities, um, I think an easy one is resource efficiency. I think we need to, to have a focus on reducing food waste uh, and we need to, to have more of a focus on reducing energy and water use. There was a few jokes made about carbon consultants and so on earlier. I, I didn't stick my hand up because I do a lot of work on carbon and I, I knew there was some mud going to be thrown our way, but, but now I'm sticking it up. Um, one thing you do need to know about in relation to carbon is the carbon reduction commitment. And this is, is basically a carbon tax, which any of you who work for large organisations, public or private sector, will now be subject to. It doesn't just cost you the cost of the energy you use, you also have to pay for every tonne of carbon you emit. So it's become ever more important to sort of pay attention to these issues. And again, it's a business issue, it isn't a sustainability issue, or rather, it's both. Second opportunity, low carbon menus, uh, seasonal food always gets mentioned. Meat and dairy, I, I'm, I'm very sorry that the two people talking about beef have gone because I had a whole list of things that I could have, could have said to them about beef carbon beef. and soil and so on and so forth. Basically, everybody from the chief scientist, the, the, the UK's <coughs> chief scientist down says, we need to eat less meat, not no meat, but less. The United Nations says it, the, the head of the sustainable unit of the NHS says it. I'm sorry, but the evidence is, is pretty... There's a dietitian agreeing with you there okay. from the Royal Master. Well, and, and there are dietetic issues as well. So <laughs> we need to be looking at low-carbon menus. We, we do need to look at using less mm. meat, again, and dairy as well for that, for that matter. Third opportunity, we need to increase supply chain engagement. There are a lot of opportunities for securing sustainability benefits, which we often don't secure because we're not talking to suppliers as much as we should do. In particular, we're not talking to them about issues of common concern, which is where do your costs lie, for example, in distribution? Can we reduce your costs, which you then pass on to us, by reducing the number of deliveries you make or, or by encouraging co-distribution? Again, this is a business issue. It's reduced costs, but it's also reduced carbon. It's also taking vehicles off the road. And there are very large social costs associated with congestion, particularly in relation to the food industry. Finally, collaborative procurement. Uh, this is a double-edged one. There's been a lot said about collaborative procurement. Yes, it is an opportunity. Um, you can do collaborative procurement and sustainable procurement at the same time, but you need to be careful. If it's done badly, you'll end up with a less sustainable scenario. So I'd strongly urge that if you're going to go down the collaborative procurement, you, particularly if you're buying into existing framework contracts, you expect them to perform against sustainability KPIs that you've set when you let that contract. Mm, I agree. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. That's well, how do I follow that? I mean, that's quite <laughs> comprehensive, and I agree with everything he said. And uh, I've agreed with everybody, uh, all the comments have been said. And, uh, but I think we've got to sort of come back to common sense. I've been in the health service for about 44, 45 years. And uh, in, the, in the early days, the health service had no money. The public sector had no money for catering. It was all spent on something more, uh, you know, people with stronger voices. Um, so here we are, here I am 44 years later. Now, I must have done something successful because I'm still here and I'm still managing a budget. So let's not go down the road of um, sort of the negative side of things. In the past sort of 10 years, I've worked very closely with Sustain, and you heard Rosie just earlier about sort of getting local food, sustainable food, security of the food chain, which I think is important. And we've done that at the Royal Brompton Hospital. At the same time, kept within our budgets and also trying to uh, increase uh, the popularity of hospital food because there's a few jokes lying around, you know, I know of. And um, 
you know, it's the patient experience. And at the same time, I think the NHS and uh, the public, you know, the public catering sector has got a moral responsibility to make sure that what we're doing is we're doing healthy meals or giving us the option of having a healthier dish on the menu.